Good afternoon, language learners. Hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Anna English. This is English Like a Native. And today we have hot off the press two new extracts from some articles from today's news. The point of today's lesson is to work with some advanced text so that we can learn some more advanced vocabulary, look at advanced writing structures, and just become familiar with news articles. They're usually written in quite an advanced way. And so if you can read the newspapers and understand them, then you are doing very well indeed. Now, this was a very popular lesson last week. I hope that you're going to enjoy it again this week. Today's articles that we're looking at are Trump's trade tariffs. Oh, that's all over the news this morning. A lot of people unhappy with Donald Trump's trade tariffs that he has imposed on the steel imports. So we're going to do a little bit on that. And we're also then going to be looking at measuring the happiness of dolphins. I do love a dolphin. In fact, dolphins were my favorite animal when I was a young girl. Um, talking about favorite animals, what is your favorite animal? Do write it in the comments box below because I'd love to know. Okay, so I have my patrons here in the Skype room. Hello, patrons. Now, patrons, if you um, have any comments, it's best to pop it in the patron room so that I can read it. Um, and I don't miss your comments and I'll definitely respond either during the lesson or after the lesson. And I also have my um, chat room, my normal chat room open on YouTube. So do feel free to write your comments. If I don't respond to you, I'm not ignoring you. There's just a lot going on for me to manage and I can't respond to all comments, but I will stay on after the lesson to try and answer some of your questions. Okay, so without further ado, let's have a look at our very first article, shall we? Now, these articles have been taken from the BBC um, news website. So if you want to read them in full, then just head over to, I think it's bbc.co.uk forward slash news, and you'll find the full um, articles there. So here we go. Just sit back, read along and listen. Trade tariffs. Chorus of condemnation intensifies. Massive US tariffs have come into force as condemnation of the Trump administration's move intensifies. Criticism of the import tax on steel and aluminium from the EU, Canada and Mexico was joined by top congressional Republicans. Leaders from affected nations reacted furiously, setting out tit-for-tat tariffs on the US ranging from steel to sleeping bags and ballpoint pens. France's president told Mr. Trump by phone that the US move was illegal. Emmanuel Macron, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Emmanuel Macron told him the EU would respond with a firm and proportionate manner. The French president normally enjoys a good relationship with his US counterpart. Okay, so that's a nice and easy, <laughs> relatively easy, I hope, article to start with. Now, there may be some words in there that you're not familiar with, and that is what we're going to look at right now. I pulled out the words I assume that some of you may not know. Um, if there's a word that you um, are not sure of that's included in the article and you're, um, it's not then followed up in the vocab section, then do write it in the comment section below and we can have a look at it together. So the first word I pulled out that you may not know is the word tariff. Let me bring my notes back up for you here so you can see this. So the word tariff is the first one. A tariff is a charge or a list of charges either for services or on goods entering a country. So if I'm bringing a service into a country or if I'm sending um, a book or something into a country, there might be a tariff for me to send it. Okay, um, so a tariff, a charge, very simple. The next word, which is quite an advanced word, it's a C2 level word, is condemn. To condemn is to criticize something or someone strongly, usually for moral reasons. So, um, for example, with the word condemn, um, 
I could condemn youths who graffiti all of the local houses. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm disapproving of young people's behavior, imagining that they are covering all the local buildings and all the local houses in graffiti. Now, if you're not sure what graffiti is, it's where you paint um, um, paint your signature or paint little drawings onto public buildings or walls. Um, you normally see a lot of graffiti in city centres. Um, it's not normally allowed. You're not allowed or supposed to paint or draw on these walls. And this is graffiti. So I could condemn the local youths for graffitiing the local houses and buildings. It means I don't think it's correct. I think it's a bad thing morally to do it because it costs a lot of money to clean up and it means that um, the neighbourhood the neighborhood doesn't look so nice anymore. So for moral reasons, I don't think it's right for the local area to be covered in graffiti. I am condemning it. Now, condemn is also sometimes used when talking about a specific building. I once lived in a house that was later condemned by the local council. If a building is condemned, it means it's no longer safe for someone to live in. It's a dangerous building. Maybe it's falling down or maybe it has a very dangerous mould growing in side. So when you breathe it in, it makes you sick. And I indeed lived in a house that was falling down. And so um, that building was condemned by the council and we had to move out to another safer building. It was condemned. So it was criticised by the council. So um, let me jump back to these words and see what else we have. Tit for tat. Now this has come up before. I think perhaps in the slang lessons it came up. And now here you see it written in a newspaper. So it's important that you understand what tit for tat means. It means an action done intentionally to punish other people because they've done something unpleasant to you. So um, the US has created these tariffs for the imports of steel. So in return, places like Canada and France have um, imposed tariffs on the imports of sleeping bags and ballpoint pens. So it's tit for tat. They're only doing it in spite, they're doing it to punish the US. Have you ever experienced tit for tat? Normally you have tit for tat things happening at school, don't you? Someone does something bad to you, so you do something bad to them. And it's just silliness, isn't it? Just silliness. I do want to say a huge thank you to Tomek briefly for your um, super chat. Thank you so much. You're always so lovely and so generous joining in with every lesson and always dropping a little donation towards the growth of this channel. So thank you so much, Tomek. If you would like a copy of these notes um, as my way of saying thank you, then just drop me a message and I'll send them to you. Okay, so we have tit for tat, condemn and tariff. Now the other words we have here which I'll just show you and then I'll quickly respond to my patrons. The other words we have are proportionate. If something is in proportion or it's proportional, we can also use proportionate, then it's corresponding in size or amount to something else. Okay, so it's the sim a similar sort of size, a proportionate size, a similar size. Um, Yes, I don't know what else to say about that. I think that's quite straightforward. Um, where did it appear in the article? Should we have a quick look? Ah, here we go. Um, the French president said that he would, the EU would respond in a firm and proportionate manner. So they will do something in a very similar size to what the US has done. So they, the US has imposed, I think it's like a 25% tax on steel. So if it's a proportionate response, then it will be a 25% tax on something that um, is imported into France from the US. Okay, so I think that makes sense. And then this word counterpart, which is a C1 level word, a counterpart or someone's counterpart is a person or a thing that has the same purpose as another one in a different organisational place. Hmm, that doesn't really 
I don't think that really helps actually as a uh, definition. But a counterpart is basically someone of a, someone who is similar. So um, in our country, similar to President Trump, we have the Prime Minister, Theresa May. She is the British counterpart. She has a similar role, a similar purpose. So hopefully that makes sense. So there we go. Counterpart, proportionate, tit for tat, condemn and tariff. Is that all of them? Yes. So that's the first article done. Now, what's going to happen now is I will reread this article. I'm going to read a sentence at a time. I will highlight it, read it, and then I'll pause. Then I want you to read the highlighted sentence out loud, practicing the same speed, intonation, and pronunciation that I have just given you. So just follow my lead, okay? Now, before I do that, I'm just going to very quickly talk to my patrons because there's lots of messages coming through here. I just want to make sure I've not missed anything. Um, Hello, all. I hope the news is about the vote of no confidence that just unseated Spain's prime minister. Oh, I haven't read about this. I've been reading about it in Spanish to practice my Spanish. I haven't heard about that news. I must check it out. Hello, all this. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Are you feeling well? You've been away for a while with your operations and I hope all is well now. It's good to see you. Hello, Peter. Hello, all. Good day. Good evening, wherever you are. And Justin, condemn you to hell is a very strong rebuke in English. Yes, absolutely. Um, If you condemn someone, um, then it's a very strong rebuke. Okay, so let's now do the pronunciation practice. So like I said, I'm going to highlight and read. And I want to um, hear you responding with the same pronunciation and um, rhythm as I did. Okay, so here we go. Trade tariffs. Chorus of condemnation intensifies. Your turn. Massive US tariffs have come into force as condemnation of the Trump administration's move intensifies. Criticism of the import tax on steel and aluminium from the EU. Canada and Mexico was joined by top congressional Republicans. Leaders from affected nations reacted furiously, setting out tit-for-tat tariffs on the US. Ranging from steel to sleeping bags and ballpoint pens, France's president told Mr. Trump by phone that the US move was illegal. Emmanuel Macron told him the EU would respond in a firm and proportionate manner. The French president normally enjoys a good relationship with his US counterpart. Fantastic. And just to remind you, tariff, condemn, tit for tat, proportionate and counterpart. Now, I do hope that... 
Having heard those particular words in the vocab list and then going back over the article helped to demystify it a little bit, to make it clearer for you. And I hope that you had a better understanding the second time through. I remember when I was younger, I used to find it quite difficult to read newspapers, especially newspapers like The Guardian, The Telegraph. And still now, sometimes I come across words in those particular newspapers that are... Um, unknown to me and it can make it quite difficult to follow the full meaning of an article but by reading stuff like this it really does help you to improve your English very quickly especially if you take the time to look up the words that you don't know. Um, bless you. Thank you Peter. So Peter has also dropped a super chat. Thank you so much. You've said hello Anna. Here is a donation for the channel. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I hope you're finding this helpful. Now we have one more to go. So that's the first half. I'm going to do another half. Hopefully it'll be a similar sort of time. If you are here for the first time, then welcome. I um, love having new people join the channel, especially if they find what I do helpful. All I would ask is that you click on that subscribe button and the bell notification button so that you don't miss out on any future lessons. Now it's... um very important that you do click the bell notification button because that way you are notified when I release a new lesson and also when I go live. So do make sure you've done that. Um, also, why don't you come and join me on Twitter and Instagram where I'll have different things going on. On Instagram, I regularly produce pronunciation videos, very short ones to help you on a regular basis improve your English pronunciation. And on Twitter, I like to have more of a voice to communicate with you, to find out what you're up to, to have a chat with you. And actually today I'm trying to find out what it is you're excited about this weekend. So if you're on Twitter, come and join me. It's written up here my handle and respond to the tweet that I put out this morning to find out what's giving you the Friday feeling. Okay, if you are enjoying this, then please give it a thumb up. And if you are being really generous today, then please just click on that share button and share this with some other people who might find it helpful. Okay, with all that said, let's now move on and look at the second article. So let me get it up for you. Here we go. So dolphins, like I said, dolphins are my favorite animal. Now this article is called Dolphin Happiness Measured by Scientists in France. So just sit back, read along and listen. Scientists working with dolphins in a, at a marine park near Paris have attempted to measure how the animals feel about aspects of their lives in captivity. In what researchers say is the first project to examine captivity from the animal's perspective, the team assessed what activities dolphin looked forward to most. They found that the marine mammals most keenly anticipated interacting with a familiar human. The results, they say, show that better human-animal bonds equal better welfare. The question of whether it is right or wrong to hold these animals in captivity has long been a point of contention, particularly in France. Dr. Clegg says that rather than answering the question of whether it is right or wrong to have these animals in captivity, she hopes the findings will help improve the lives of those thousands of animals that will spend their lives in dolphinariums. But... Even if they are in good welfare, we need more research to ensure that their presence is really engaging people with conservation. If they're just here for our entertainment, that can't be justified. Okay, fantastic. So, I really, I really quite like this article, actually. I have a huge interest in conservation, in wildlife, I know particularly at a moment, everyone, after watching the Blue Planet series, the fantastic program Blue Planet, um, everyone is particularly interested in the health and well-being of our oceans and our sea life. And so articles like this I find very interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about animals in captivity. 
of course, I used to love going to the zoo, going to the aquarium, seeing these amazing wild animals up close. It is fantastic, but I know that potentially it's not good for them or it might make them unhappy. And so now I don't know how I feel about it anymore. Is it wrong? Should we be doing it? Should wild animals just left be left to be wild? Um, are we supporting it by going to the zoos and giving them money? Um, yeah, it's a difficult one to answer. So when I decide how I feel about it, I will let you guys know. But it's an interesting conversation to have. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is go and have a look at the particular words that I felt were more advanced that maybe some of you don't know. If there are any words besides the ones I've listed that you're not sure of, then write it in the comments. If I can't respond, then maybe someone else who does know will respond to you. Okay, let's all help each other. So, which words did I pick out? Let's have a look. Mm, let me bring it back up for you. So the first one is a B2 word. It's the word aspect. Now, aspect is used in lots of ways. In this particular um, article, it's used to mean one part of a situation, a problem or a subject. So we're talking about different aspects of a dolphin's life. So it's just different parts, different parts of a dolphin's life. Okay. So aspect, nice and easy, aspect. The next word is the word captivity. I wasn't sure whether to put this one on the list. I feel like it may be relatively simple, but um, if you haven't come across it before, then you wouldn't know. So to be in captivity, it's the situation in which a person or animal is kept somewhere and not allowed to leave. So if you are in a prison, if you are in a cage, or you are kept in a box of some sort, you are in captivity. If someone is kidnapped, taken against their will, then they may be kept in captivity. Okay, that is a word that you may use. Okay, so here's a C1 word for you. Perspective. Perspective. A perspective is a particular way of considering something, a way of thinking about something. Another way you could explain it is a point of view. So I might say, what is your perspective? How do you think about it? How do you see things? From my perspective, um, it seems like this is happening. But from your perspective, it might seem different. So, for example, very simply, perhaps we both live in the same house, but you don't have access to my room and I don't have access to your room. And although we live in the same house, we might have a different view out of the building to what is outside. Now, my room might look out onto the neighbouring building. And so my perspective <laughs> is not very good. I don't think we live in a nice area because when I look out of my window, all I see is a brick wall from the neighbouring building. But from your perspective, when you look out of your window, you can see the ocean, you can see the coast and beautiful countryside. So you have a wonderful view. So from your perspective, you are very happy living in this house. You have a wonderful view and you think about things very differently because your perspective is different. Your, um, your experience is different. But from my perspective, I get no daylight. I have an awful view and I want to move house because I hate where I live. So we have different, a different perspective on things. That's a very simple way of looking at it. Okay, so perspective, very simple. So what else do we have in these notes? Let's have a look. Anticipate, another C1 word here. To anticipate is to imagine or to expect something that will happen. So if you are coming to my house, then I am anticipating your arrival. I'm expecting you to arrive. Maybe I'm imagining you arriving. I'm expecting it. I'm anticipating your arrival. And in anticipation of your arrival, I will put the kettle on. Maybe um, I will tidy up. I will prepare the spare room so you have somewhere to stay if you're staying overnight. So in anticipation of your arrival, I prepared my house. Okay. Um, some people, you might say, I'm excited. I'm, I'm waiting with anticipation. 
and it just means that you're excited um, about what's about to happen. So to anticipate. Uh, then we have the word, let me bring it up, welfare. Now, welfare can be used in a couple of ways, but in this particular article, it means the physical and mental health and happiness. So it's referring to the welfare of the animals, their physical and mental health and happiness. So that's quite simple. It's a B2 word. Um, so you might say, my only concern is the animal's welfare. I'm concerned about their physical and mental health. I'm concerned that they're happy and healthy. Okay, and then the next one is the word contention. I couldn't find the level of this word, but contention I thought was a good word to pick out. Um, it means the disagreement that results from opposing arguments. So if there is contention, there is a disagreement. People have a different perspective, a different point of view. I always hear the phrase, the point of contention or the bone of contention. So the thing that we are disagreeing on. So for example, um, let me think of an example. Um, perhaps, perhaps I like to put the lights on when it's dark. I like to have the lights in the house so that I don't feel like I'm straining my eyes but perhaps my family feel like it's a waste of electricity. And so I will turn on the lights and they instantly turn off the lights. And I say, but my eyes hurt. And they say, but the electricity bill is so high. Then this becomes a problem and maybe we argue about it. So you could say that the lighting is a bone of contention. The lighting is a point of contention. It is something that causes disagreement between us. Okay, so contention. I hope you're all all right. I am not looking at the comments very much at the moment. Okay, fantastic. Yes, you're all having a chat. That's fantastic. It is always great that you can converse with one another when I'm unable to read the comments. That's really helpful. So thank you for those of you that do help other people by answering those questions for me. Okay, so the next one on the list, and we just have two more to go. The next one on the list is conservation. And this is a B2 word. Let me bring it up for you. Conservation. And this means to, um, it's the protection of plants and animals, natural areas, and, oh, hang on. I wonder what that word was then. <laughs> and interesting and important structures and buildings, especially from, oh gosh, goodness me, what's happened to all my spaces? Ah, what is happening? Especially from the damaging effects of human activity. So it just basically means to protect things, to protect animals, to protect plants, to protect structures and buildings. It's all about conservation. You want to conserve, keep it safe. Um, and particularly we use conservation when we're protecting things from the damaging effects of human activity. Unfortunately, there are many damaging effects caused by humans, aren't there? Um, <clears throat> so that's an interesting question, actually, that I'm just seeing coming up in the comments. Just caught my eye. What's the difference between to conserve and preserve? I don't know, you know. <clears throat> they are very similar. I definitely would use them in the same context, but there must be a difference. So um, if anyone has the chance right now to look that up in the dictionary to find out um, what the definitive differences between conserve and preserve I'd love to know so please do check that out for me and let us know okay so there's lots of chatter in the patron room now I will come and respond to your questions in a moment excuse me <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat <laughs> so when you go croaky you can say I have a frog in my throat it's a very common uh, phrase that we use Okay, so we have one last word to go and that will then cover all of it. We are then going to go back and do the pronunciation practice. If you haven't already, please do give this video a thumb up and do get involved by commenting um, in the comments box. All this interaction really does help these videos to be discovered by other English learners and that's what I'm here for, to help as many people as I possibly can. Okay, so... The very last word on the list is the word to justify. It's a B2 word, relatively easy if you already know it. 
To justify is to give or to be a good reason for something. So if I'm going to justify what I'm doing, it means I'm giving a good reason for it. For example, I once, when I was a young girl, I found some money in my bedroom. It was like 10 pence. It was a tiny amount of money. And I was so excited because with that 10 pence, I could go to the shop and buy some sweeties. Mm. And just as I was heading out of the door, my mum came and told me off for something I had done earlier in the day. And she grounded me. If you're grounded, it means you're not allowed to leave the house for a set amount of time. So I think she grounded me for the day. And I was like, oh no, I was so excited about going to the shop to buy some sweets. But I was grounded so that I couldn't go out. So I decided to disobey my mum. I snuck out of the house and I, I crawled along the garden path so I wouldn't be seen. And then I ran to the shops. I bought the sweets put them in my pocket, I ran back home and I snuck back up the garden path and I went to open the door but someone had locked the door so I couldn't get in and I was like oh no so I had to knock on the door my mum answered the door realised what I, I had done that I had disobeyed her and gone out just moments after being grounded and when she asked me why did you do that where have you been and why, why did you go out I tried to justify my actions. I tried to give a reason that she would accept. And it was the truth. I said to her, I just wanted to go and buy some sweets, mum, please. And you know what my mum did? Quite rightly, she confiscated. Here's another word. She took away. She confiscated those sweets. And I was then grounded for a further two days. <laughs> I was very upset. So the moral of that story is don't disobey your mother and um, also um, don't try and justify yourself with silly excuses. But yes, the word justify is what I was trying to uh, give you there. So let me just have a quick look at this for you. So you can see it written down. Here you go. To justify, to give a reason for. And as I stated before, both of these articles have been taken from the BBC website. So if you do want to read them in full, then you can. Um, there's also a link down in the description box below if you want to be taken directly to that. Now we're going to do our pronunciation practice. So get ready. <clears throat> as I did before, I'm going to highlight it and then I'll read it and give a pause. <clears throat> here we go. Uh, let's go to here. Scientists working with dolphins at a marine park near Paris. Have attempted to measure how the animals feel about aspects of their lives in captivity. In what researchers say is the first project to examine captivity from the animal's point, sorry, from the animal's perspective. The team assessed what activities dolphins looked forward to most. They found that the marine mammals most keenly anticipated interacting with a familiar human. The results, they say, show that better human-animal bonds equals better welfare. The question, the question of whether it is right or wrong to hold these animals in captivity. Sorry, let me start that again. The question of whether it is right or wrong to hold these animals in captivity has long been a point of contention, particularly in France.
Dr. Clegg says that rather than answering the question of whether it is right or wrong to have these animals in captivity, She hopes the findings will help improve the lives of those thousands of animals that will spend their lives in dolphinariums. Oh, no, that's a long one. Let's do to there. But even if they are in good welfare, we need more research to ensure that their presence is really engaging people with conservation. If they're just here for our entertainment, that can't be justified. Fantastic. And just to remind you, the vocab we looked at was aspect, captivity, perspective, anticipate, welfare, contention, conservation, and justify. Wonderful. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, guys. So, um, so thank you so much. Um, NI4 Apple, you said, um, according to the Cambridge Online Dictionary, both words seem to have the same meaning and you're talking about preserve and conserve, I'm sure. So thank you so much for looking that up for me. Um, it really was a very interesting question. So thank you. Um, what else can I see here? Uh, da, 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 da. just lots of you chatting what I'll do is come back and have a look at your comments later but if you have any questions that you want to put to me now then retype the question and I'm more likely to see it let me have a quick look at what my patrons are saying um, I think there's lots of long messages come through here so they're really long ones I'll have to come back and have a look at later um, Andreas bless you the route to recovery is a bit bumpier and longer than expected but I'm doing better thank you Oh, glad. I'm glad that you're improving, Andreas, and it is wonderful to have you back in the Patreon room. Um, I will come back and look at all these really long messages later, guys. A bone of contention in my household is which TV program we watch at 6pm. That's a fantastic uh, use of the word contention. Brilliant. Yes, that is a bone of contention in many households, isn't it? What program will be watched on the television. Um, okay, let, you guys are talking about the zoo thing, which I'll come back to. Da, 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 da. Okay, so Peter, you just repeated what I just said, which is not much difference between preserve and conserve. Thank you so much for double checking that for me. That's fantastic. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, I am doing things on Instagram and Twitter. They're listed above. So do come and talk to me. Come and chat to me on Twitter. That's what it's there for. And do come and make the most of all those videos that I'm putting out on Instagram as well. The next time I'm going to be live will be on Monday. Let me quickly check my diary. I don't think there's anything else in other than, yes, my normal lessons and um, my live lesson at four o'clock where we will be live again probably for around 30 minutes to 45 minutes depending on what we're covering um, i might change things up a little bit i know we normally do phrasal verbs um, but i might try and find a different way to deliver them to make them more interesting for you uh, we'll see <laughs> maybe not i'll try my best but um but yes i hope you can join me for that Otherwise, I will be here again next Friday and there may even be some pre-recorded lessons coming to you in the meantime. Um, guys, thank you so much. It has been wonderful. Um, I've just got one question that I'm seeing here out the corner of my eye saying, Dear Anna, I have a problem with memorising vocabulary. How can I improve that? The best way to keep vocabulary in your head is to do it in small chunks and repeat it. So when you learn a new word, like for example, today you may have learned contention, maybe a new word for you. So you learn it and then a few moments later you say it again and you use it in an example, you say it out loud. 
then you leave it at the end of the day, you say it again, you remind yourself again. The next day, you remind yourself again. And then you leave it for a week. And a week later, you revise it. Then you leave it for four weeks. And a month later, you revise it. So you start off doing very regular revisions. And then you can spread them out more and more and more. Once you've revisited an idea um, four or five times, what you're doing is you're building a neurological pathway. You're building a little room in your head that's storing that information. And the more you revisit it, the more that path is easier to take. And so the stronger that memory becomes. Sorry, I'm probably not making much sense at all, but basically revision, repetition, um, these are the ways to keep things in your memory. You have to use the vocabulary. There's no point in learning it once. It will just disappear. Your brain will make space for something it deems more useful. So use it a number of times and eventually it will stick in your long-term memory. Like we have the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's very, very true in this case. So learn small chunks of vocabulary, use them often, and um, that's the way to increase your vocabulary successfully. There are other things you can do as well. I always talk about immersing yourself in language. So watching English programs, English movies, listening to podcasts, listening to audible books, which is something I always recommend. I have put a link down below to some... Um, to an Audible trial where you can have Audible for 30 days for free. It's something I did. I now pay for Audible because I think it's a very valuable resource. Um, and my recommendation for you guys, if you are advanced, is the Stephen Fry um, Sherlock Holmes uh, book. So do go and look that up. Um, speaking English as often as you can. Just trying to incorporate English into your everyday life, basically. Okay. All right, guys, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been an absolute pleasure. I do hope to see you again very soon. If you did like it, please do give it a thumb up and share it with anyone who may be interested. Otherwise, until next time, take care and goodbye.